dreams are for the nighttime, days are wide awake. Visions are for crazy men, not me, for goodness sake. But I'm seeing things, believe me. What good will all these visions do if you say, I can't see you, I'm missing you completely. I'm hoping and wishing that the next apparition is a sight of you, welcoming me home. It's hard enough living without having visions to the left and the right of you. They won't leave me alone. Give me a cold, hard fact. Damn it. How you doing, Cheech? I got no heat upstairs. <laughs> you got heat. No, 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 my radiator's broken up there. Freezing. <laughs> the radiator is not broken. I turned it off. You, what, what, she did. You did. Come here. Ma. What'd you do that for? Uh, they're hot, Louie. Have you got any butter? This is a bakery, not a restaurant. For my finger. Have you got any butter? This is a bakery, not a hospital. And it's not a hotel either. What are you talking about? I turned the heat off upstairs because that room is for my boxes, not for my son. How many times have I told you that this is just temporary? Marge wants some time alone until she figures out whether we should be together. What's the figure? You're married. You should be together. You should have married an Italian. Hey, you didn't marry an Italian. What's it look like for us? We got a split level in Mississauga, and our son is living in our storeroom. And people are starting to talk. Louie, come home. Live with us in Mississauga. Hey, I'm almost 40 years old. Now, I'm not going to live with my parents. Listen. You figure out how much money you both want, and I'm going to write you a check for the storeroom, okay? If our son's too old to live with us, what's he doing here? I don't know. I'm seeing things, believe me, you've never seen before. But little things deceive me, like when you threw me out the door. I couldn't believe my eyes. Supposed to call me before you come over, remember? Come oh, yeah, on. That's what that Maybe I should get you one of those Darth uh, Vader helmets. Huh? Oh, come on, Lou. I don't want to argue with you. I'm not arguing. Am I arguing? Yes, hello? Oh, uh, yes, he's right here. Just a minute, please. Lou, 
It's for you. It's a paper. Okay, thanks. Why are they phoning here? Didn't you change your number? Yes, but I told you it's going to take a lot of time to go through the computer. You know how these things are. By the time they process it, we'll be back together again. Oh, Come on. Louie, give me a chance. All right, all right. Hello, Ciccone. Ciccone, I need you to come in. Donnelly over at the carts is sick, and I don't have anyone to cover for him. Oh, come on, Perkins, please. That's my day off. I got plans. I know it's your day off, and I know you got plans. We all do. And I plan for you to be at the Supreme Court in ten minutes. Well, was one of the guys just called in sick, and they want me to come in front. Did you take Jason to the park by yourself? Gee, I don't know, Lou. I mean, it's such short notice. Dora. What? Listen, honey, Daddy's got to go to work, okay? Somebody's sick. But I'll tell you what. I'll take you to dinner tonight, okay? Hi, uh, can we go to McDonald's? Anywhere you want to go. Okay. Right? Get your apple turnover. Oh, yeah. Did anything okay with you? Yeah. As long as it doesn't turn into breakfast. Please, Mrs. Ciccone. I'm a separated man. Well, try to remember that, okay? Yeah, I think I've got it down for sure now. Hey, listen, honey. You gotta drive past the courts to get to the parks. Could you drop me off at City? Louie, now when are you gonna learn how to drive? Come on, who needs a car in the city? in the municipality of Metropolitan Toronto in the county of York. And it charges Charles N. Vernick with committing murder in the second degree, to wit, acting with intent to cause the death of Ralph Morgan by stabbing. In reviewing the evidence of this case, you will recall that the accused testified that he had been unemployed and an alcoholic for the last 12 years. In his own words, I'm a bomb. Mr. Vernick testified. Excuse me, this isn't the Bucknell Larceny trial. No, it's not, no. Would you happen to know where that is? In courtroom seven, I believe. But this is, isn't this seven? This is courtroom six. This is six. If he doesn't remember anything, he'll learn the next morning. And he woke up. What do we got here? The body of Ralph Morgan lying beside him. When he found the blood on the body, he panicked and ran out of the alley. Now, it was at this point that the accused encountered Constables Welsh and Leblonsky who were patrolling the area. Now, when the officers tried to detain Vernick, he tried to pull away from them, appearing very agitated. <laughs> you have also seen Exhibit A, an ordinary fish knife, which Dr. Lester, a forensic expert, has identified as a You have heard several witnesses testify that a week before the Ralph Morgan murder, he and the accused had a fist fight with Vernick getting the worst of it. And when the accused was asked what the fight was about, he replied, a bottle of wine. the intent to commit murder. Now, in my humble opinion, after considering all the facts of the case, there should be no doubt in your minds that the offense was committed with knowing intent by Charles N. Vernick. And I would also suggest to you that you should bring back a verdict of guilty of murder in the second degree. It's now 11.30. I would like to recess for an extended lunch period, during which time I will review my notes on these proceedings and prepare my charge to the jury. I would ask that we reconvene at 3 o'clock. This court stands adjourned until 3 p.m. Congratulations on your first case, Ms. Redford. Oh, thank you. I was so nervous. It wasn't apparent. An excellent presentation of the facts. Oh, good. You know, it's amazing how things have changed. When you're
father and I were in law school, there was only one girl in our class, and she dropped out in second year to, to get married. Excuse me. That, that stuff you were saying in there about that guy knifing his friend, are you absolutely positive that that's what happened? Yes. Yes, sir. Hold on there. Do you mind telling us who you are? Yeah, sure. Chicone, Toronto Gazette. Who are you? Robert Spencer. I'm the Crown Attorney. How are you doing? You're absolutely positive that that guy killed his friend. Well, we feel that we have presented a case which establishes the culpability of Mr. Burnett. And you can quote her on that. Oh, yeah, you see, but I'm yeah. not on this case. Uh, I was supposed to be in seven carrying the, uh, covering the stationary thing. But uh, the damnest thing happened. When I was uh, looking at that Vernick guy, I got this uh, feeling. I don't, not exactly feeling. It was like... Excuse a... us, we're going to be late for lunch. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute. Good day. But, uh... I don't know, Louie. I mean, everybody has feelings. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Up. Okay, yeah, okay, I saw. Yeah. Listen, go no, sit down no, over there. I want to talk to your dad. No. <clears throat> like this morning. When I woke up, I had a feeling. I had a feeling I'd be alone with Jason all day. March, please, look. It's more than a feeling. I saw the knife. It's like that time with uh, Emily's rum cake. You remember that time? No. Look at this little duckies over here. What do you mean, no? Oh. No. Oh, I God. told you about it. It was three years ago when Jason made his first communion. I had to work overtime, so I was late for the party. Come on, you remember this. Oh, you're always late. Now, Jason, yes. don't be giving all of that hot dog to the duck. Save some for yourself. Listen to your mother, Jason. I, w I was on the streetcar on my way home, and in my mind, I saw Aunt Millie and her rum cake. It's clear as day. It even had the little red and the green cherries right on top. I got it. Aunt Millie killed the drunk with the rum cake. Oh, come on, Marge, please. I'm serious here. If what I saw in my head is true, and I swear to God that I feel in my gut that it is, then that poor bum is going to jail for something he didn't even do. Then if you really believe that, what you should do is go tell the police. Oh, come on. Are you crazy? I'm going to tell them I have visions to put me away. They'll think I'm nuts. What do you want from me? Now, you asked me what you should do, and I told right. you. Give me these french fries. Uh, what, what, what? Look, you didn't order any. These are mine. I don't believe this. I come to you with a problem, and you're worried about your potatoes? Now, please, I want the reinforcement. How are you, my wife? That's fine. We're just separate. You two stop yelling. You're scared to death. Uh, behave yourself, Jason, huh? <laughs> Are you trying to tell this court that in your 18 years in the civil service, you've never taken a single piece of government property? I might have taken a couple of ballparks. I mean, everybody does that. Excuse me, sir. What's going on in there? The jury's just coming back in. Thank you very much. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Foreman, please stand. Members of the jury, have you agreed upon your verdict? Yes, we have. Do you find the accused Charles Vernick to be guilty or not guilty? We find the accused guilty of murder in the second degree. Members of the jury, hearken unto your verdict as the court hath recorded it. If you find the accused guilty as charged, so say you all. I would like to thank the members of the jury for their attention during the course of the trial. The administration of justice is grateful for your attendance in this court.
Great, great. Look, could you do me a favor? Could you run a plate? Zucchini's going soft. Oh, my God. Listen, why don't you go downstairs to the coffee shop, order a tea with lemon, and tell them to hold the tea? Brilliant! Wait till you taste this soup with the lemon in it. <laughs> I can't wait. Fantastic! I'm sorry. Chicone. What the hell are you doing here? Why aren't you in court? They just recessed. Listen, this thing may be much bigger than we thought. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. A guy didn't just take paper clips. I mean, he stole erasers, typewriter ribbon, and then oh, a crook. There you are. I got the information that you wanted. On the government lost any trial. Very good. No, on Dr. Eric Brandt. Who? Dr. Brandt. The guy you saw with the car. What? The car? Yeah. Dr. Brand is a psychologist who runs a clinic called the Centered Behavior Institute. Mm -hmm. And in 1977, he had a minor success with a self-help book entitled Saying No. Oh, I think my wife read that book. The clinic specializes in helping people kick bad habits like smoking, drinking, drugs. Chaconi, what the hell does this have to do with the larceny case? Come on, Max, you just heard Enid. Compulsive behavior? I think that that paperclip guy is a kleptomaniac. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Chicone! Don't mention it. Hold it! Don't eat that! You don't remember anybody handing you a knife? I drink. I get drunk, I pass out. How the hell do I remember what happened in the alley that night? Well, listen, the Crown Attorney said that you and Morgan had a fight one week before the stabbings. Is this true? Uh, just a push and a shove. Besides, I was sober then. Drunk, I wouldn't hurt a fly. At least not that I remember. When was the last time you saw Morgan alive? When he punched me out, he wasn't on the streets after that. Hold it. You, you mean he disappeared and then he turned up dead, right? No, 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 no. I don't mean it like that. Look, guys drop out of sight for a while, right? Then a few weeks later, they show up. Like Freddie One Leg, another buddy of mine. He dropped out of sight the same time Morgan did. And this uh, Freddie One Leg, he popped up again? No, come to think of it, he didn't. Well, don't you think that's a little strange? No. Guys in the streets come and go. Sometimes they go, and they don't come back. I'll be getting back to you, OK? Yeah. Hey, uh, you really think maybe I didn't do it? That's right. Geez, that's a great thing. I got a wife and two kids, you know. Maybe if I get out of here, and now that I'm on the wagon, I can go and look them up. They, they're up in the radio. Or is it on sound? I don't remember. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Oh, hi. Are you here to join our weight control clinic? You know, I'm uh, Luigi Cohn from the uh, Toronto Gazette. Uh, huh. We're doing an article on uh, weight reduction, and I just thought maybe if I... Uh, maybe see. pick up a couple of pointers for yourself, too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, welcome, Lou. Oh, listen, the best way to learn about our program is just to jump right in and participate. So why don't you have a seat, okay? Everybody, this is uh, Lou Ciccone. Huh? Now, I don't care whether it's religion, psychology, or philosophy. All the biggies say the same thing. You've got to choose either to love yourself or hate yourself. And choosing to love yourself means choosing to love others and trusting them to love you, huh? Mm -hmm. And maybe when you get to that point, you won't eat so damn much, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start things off with a simple trust exercise. Now, I need a volunteer, but I don't know. Let's get, uh, Lou Ciccone from the Gazette. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, take your coat off now, take your coat off. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Lou, what I want you to do is totally relax your body. Relax. Mm -hmm. I've got a little tension on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's been a tough day. Right. Now, fall straight backwards without turning your head or putting your arms up. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Mm. Morris Dale here will catch you. That's the trust part. You've got to trust Morris to catch you. Okay. You're going to catch me. That's right. <laughs> okay. I'm sure you're going to catch me now, right? Yeah. All right. You wouldn't happen to have a helmet, would you? Trust, <laughs> trust Morris. Okay, okay. Trust Morris. Sensitivity exercises are only the beginning. Our program runs for 52 sessions. Look, why don't you come in the office and let me outline the whole thing for you? Well, you me. see, actually, I've got to go. Now, Lou, I don't think you're taking the proper time to get a really clear picture of our work. Well, I've seen enough, and... Uh... Lou, I hope this isn't going to be one of those hatchet jobs. You know, it is not that easy to make people change their habitual behavioral patterns, and we have had one of the highest success rates in this city. <laughs> I want to mention that in the audit, okay? <laughs> God bless you, Lou. <laughs> Thank you. Door. Oh, I'll see you, okay? Take, take care of yourself. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Excuse oh, me. Uh, Lou, this is William Smythe, our physical therapist. We do a lot of massage here. Uh, well, this is Lou Ciccone from the Gazette. Yeah? How are you doing? Fine, fine. All right. I'll just go on. I'll see you. Hey, uh, uh, Lou uh... Ciccone, you look familiar. Do I, do I know you? Where'd you go to high school? Harvard Collegiate. Harvard Collegiate? Are you, really? Are you Willie Smythe? Oh, I haven't seen this guy for years. Good seeing you, Willie. I, I don't remember going to school with you. Yo, I was a senior. You were a freshman. Jeez. I don't remember that. Yo, well, some of us lost our hair, huh? <laughs> Take care, babe. Hmm. Small world, huh? Yeah. I open the door, and, and there's Brandt. He's standing at the bottom of the stairs, and he's, uh, he's staring at this guy, you know, he's just... I close the door and I turn around and he's uh, standing there and he's still smiling at me. And the whole thing is weird. I mean, it's really... It was weird. Really weird. It certainly is. Very strange. Yeah, well, like, like I told you before, nothing like this has ever happened to me except for Aunt Millie's rum cake. I don't fool around with this ESP stuff. I mean, you never know where it's coming from, you know? I don't even read my horoscope. I'm a Catholic. Oh. Yes. It wouldn't happen to have a couple of aspirin, would you? My head is split me over here. Uh... Anison. No, I'm sorry I don't. Listen, I really appreciate you coming here and confiding in me, Mr. Ciccone, but I'm sorry I can't stay any longer. I'm late for an appointment already. Now, if you just want to sit in my office here and relax, you, you just be my guest. 
But I have to go. Oh, just hold it close. You think I'm crazy, don't you? Uh, no. Oh, yes, yes, don't. yes. You definitely think I'm crazy. And I tell you what. I would think I was crazy, too. If somebody came in here, I mean, and they started telling me this story, I would think they were crazy, too. But uh, uh, I'm not crazy. You see, I may be seeing things, but I'm definitely not crazy, okay? Mr. Jordan, no. Right. And I'm like, I have okay, to Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just going to give you a few hard facts that you can check out, okay? These are hard facts. This is nothing from my head. And then you go and you check these things out, okay? Uh, I'm going to tell you what we want. Listen, I'm late. Sh Come on, I'm walking with you. I'm going to give you some facts, right. okay? Can we pick this up in the morning? No. Look, I've had a very long day, and I'm keeping somebody waiting. You've had a long day. I'm on overtime on a story I'm not even getting paid for. Listen, it's quite possible I'm having a nervous breakdown. But if I'm not, and what I saw, I actually saw, then you're putting an innocent man in jail. Well, what do you want me to do about it? It's very simple. I want you to go to the cops, and I want you to check and see if Brant has a record. And find out about Smythe, that guy I told you about, Smythe, who was in the courtroom. And also, go to the morgue and find out about a uh, one-legged guy named Freddy. Freddy one-legged. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Giacconi. I'll look into it. We'll keep uh, in just touch. Just a minute. You're not writing any of this down. I want you to write it down, okay? Uh, I want you to remember this. Is this guy bothering you? Uh, no, 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 Kenny. It's okay, really. Oh, but Kenny. Kenny. Kenny Volker? That's right. Kenny Volker uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs? My kid is crazy about you. You know, a lot of kids, they're into the Star Wars stuff like that, but my kid loves hockey players, and especially you. He loves you. Can, can I have your autograph? Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, his name is Jason. Jason uh, Ciccone. Just say Jason yeah, Ciccone, uh, whatever. You know, what you do normal. Okay, uh, uh, Ciccone. Uh, uh, Ciccone. Ciccone. Uh, right. How do you spell it? That's C-I-C-C-O-N-E. Jason Ciccone. Okay. Smite. Smite. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Here you go. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to give you my address. I'm going to give you where I work. And anytime you want to reach me, you call me, okay? Right. Okay, thanks a lot. Right. Hey, that's my autograph. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm going to write over here. It's not, your name's not over there, okay? Uh, no, look, I've got it here already. I'm going to rip it over here, and your name is here. The kid's happy. Everybody's happy. Okay, nice meeting. Is this your pen? No. This is my pen. Okay, goodbye. Have a nice time. Nice meeting. Who's that guy? Don't ask. It's for you. All right. Thanks, Pop. Yeah, hello. This is Perkins. We've just put the paper to bed, and I notice there is no story by Louis Giacconi. So I thought I'd call just to wish you good night and tell you. You're suspended. Hey, Louie, where, where are you going? Where are you going out? I'm going to bed. Excuse me, uh, does Lou Ciccone live here? No. Yes, upstairs. Wait a minute, I'll get him. Lou, are you decent? Yeah. Right this way. So, Lou is living upstairs now? Oh, no. He was in the neighborhood and he wanted to take a nap. So who's the girl then? Mr. Ciccone? Mr. Ciccone? Yeah. It's you. Huh? How are you doing? I just got up. Uh, uh, do you live here? No. Uh, yeah, my wife and me, we're, we're separated. I usually uh, live with her, but uh, I live here now temporarily. Oh. Uh, sit down. Thanks. Hey, uh, sitting, those are my pants. She's sitting in my pants. Oh, I see. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Excuse me. So, uh, what do you got? I happened to be in the coroner's office early this morning, and I inquired about your indigent amputee. Uh, Freddie Wonderleg, right? Yes. Well, the coroner does have a report of receiving the body of a Frederick Melville, an amputee two weeks before the Morgan murder. I knew it. How did he die? Accidental drowning. Yeah, accidentally. Somebody accidentally hit him in the head and pushed him in the river. No, no. There was no evidence of foul play. 
Given the high level of alcohol in the blood, it was deduced that Melville was inebriated, fell into the river, and drowned. Well, you and I are going to go see the coroner. Why? Because I want to see whether any other rummies accidentally drowned or accidentally got knives shoved in their backs. Just a minute now. I'm sorry, excuse me. And then we're going to go to the cops. And we're going to ask whether Brandt and his cronies have got records. I did. You did? They don't. They don't. They don't, but the RCMP keep an unofficial record of people they investigate but don't charge. Eric Brandt is on that list. Uh-huh. Eleven years ago, he was a staff psychologist at a federal penitentiary out west. He resigned because of unethical conduct. It seems that he was using shock therapy as a treatment for homosexual prisoners. And there was some question as to whether the inmates had volunteered or had been pressured into participating by Brandt. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Well, the Mounties investigated. He resigned, and the whole thing was hushed up. Well, they knew I wasn't crazy. Well, I don't know if we can draw that conclusion from this evidence, but uh, there does seem to be some correlation here that perhaps we should pursue. Perhaps. Hey, there's no perhaps about it. Don't you see? Brandt is not doing it with gays anymore. He's doing it with drunks. Now, Mr. Caccioni, I'm not sure... Caccioni. Caccioni, sorry. I'm not sure. Listen, the guy is into behavior modification. And he would like to try a few things that aren't exactly sanctioned by the medical association. So he picks up some drunks, and when he's finished using them as guinea pigs, he throws them into the river, just like Freddie One Lake. Only Morgan, he was very, very stupid. You see, he tried to escape. So what they do with him, they shove the knife in his back. And poor, poor Charlie Vernick, you know what happened to him? He just happened to be around very conveniently so that they could frame him. Are you seeing all this? No, no, come on. What do you think? I'm some kind of swami? This is logic, deduction. I know, but it's just a bunch of hypotheses. I mean, you haven't given me something concrete, something I can take to the judge as evidence. Oh, come on, please don't start that legal crap, huh? You're the prosecuting attorney. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have doubts. Yes, I do have doubts, but you haven't given me any new information, so I'm just at a loss at how to proceed. I'll tell you how to proceed. You and I are going to go see your boss. What's his name? Uh, the Silver Fox guy. Uh, Mr. Spencer. Yeah, we're going to go see him. And then we're going to lay everything out for him very nicely. And then he is going to put Brant behind bars where the gentleman belongs. Oh, no. Mr. Spencer will definitely not be receptive to vision. Oh, yeah? But well, we're going to go see. Now, there are certain procedures in this department that must be followed. Mr. Spencer is very definite about that. Well, I would like to explain to him from my position the things that I saw, like Freddie One Leg, that whole thing, and, and stuff in my head. How are you going to tell him about that? I am very capable of presenting the facts of our case. What am I, Mickey Mouse? Where will I be able to find you after my meeting? Right here on this bench. Don't you have something to do? Yes, and I'm doing it. Bye-bye. thoughts about my first conviction. After all, a man's freedom is at stake. Yes, it's the wrong man. He also said that I shouldn't let my emotional state make me susceptible to every crazy theory no, about hold, this man's what, supposed innocence. What, what is innocence. he Hold it. Crazy? Who the hell is he calling crazy? Please, Mr. Spencer, look at me. He already thinks I'm unstable. Now, you could jeopardize my job. Now, if any real evidence comes to light linking Brandt with the victim, well, perhaps I could prepare a brief... Okay, I'll spare. Forget about it, Eric! Reports, your evidence, just forget about all of it. I got this far by myself, and I'll do the rest alone. Thank you very much, okay? What are we doing here? We're waiting and we're watching. <sighs> babysitter charges double after midnight. I told you to forget about the babysitter. What are you doing? It's 12.30. I'm going to leave in 15 minutes. I'm going to pay for the sitter, okay? Just forget about you it. You can't pay for the sitter. You're on suspension. You don't have any money. <sighs> so boring. Get down, get down, get down. What are you doing? They're coming out. We're going to follow the car. You expect me to drive in this position? We don't want them to see us. When they go by, then we'll get up and we'll follow them. You're wearing two different colored socks. Stop it, let's go. Come Where's on. the car? Oh, God, you're getting me nervous now. Put the wipers on. Shut the oh, Put the wipers on. Oh, you let's go. Come shut on. up. You're Stop. making Come me on. nervous. Speed up, you're losing. You're losing. Okay, 
Okay, not too close. Come on, drop back. Dro drop back. Wait, I'm trying to. There's somebody behind us. We're losing them again. All right, all right. Watch, watch, watch. Don't make me nervous. Come on, shut up. Look out, my God. Oh, How are they doing? Louie, I was nowhere out near them. Come on. Jeez. Fabulous. We lost them. That's it. What are you doing? You don't like the way I drive, you drive. Come on. Come on. Let's get back in the car, all right? Just, just get back in the car. You I'm drive sorry, me sorry, out okay? in the middle of the night. I had to kill to get a babysitter. Yeah. I sat alone in that dark for hours, and you've got the nerve to criticize my driving? Let's just get back in the car. Go, you maniac! All right, all right. I'm going to drive by myself. You want to drive? I'm going to drive, okay? I'm driving. <laughs> Turn the lights off and keep the motor running. guys are doing what you just told me they're doing what's going to happen if they catch you come on brant's only interested in people with bad habits i don't smoke i don't drink and i'm not that fat yeah but you're crazy don't you realize this is very dangerous listen if i get into trouble the cops will bail me out now go call them please louie oh, let's go on phone 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 emergency. I have to call the police. Go away. Wait, I've used the telephone. Go away or, or, or I'll call the police.
Brad. to be able to make a very strong case against Dr. Brandt. The police found that he kept very detailed records of all his experiments. Bless his scientific little heart. How about you? How's your head? Well, come here. Actually, I'm, I'm just in here for a transplant. But look, don't, don't tell anybody, all right? Oh. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> well, um... Better be going. I guess I'll see you in court. Uh, not if I can help it. It's too hard on my head. Oh. Getting oh. again. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks again. I'm a caution. I'll see you. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Chatsworth. Dr. Chatsworth. Yeah, hello, Chaconi. So where's my story? Please, Max, you're not going to start in again about this paper and stealing stuff. No, I'm not talking about paper stealing. I'm talking about your Dr. Frankenstein exclusive. Oh, uh, well, you uh, said I was on suspension, remember? No, you're not on suspension. Well, don't you think they should get me a column or something? I mean, I'm too old for general assignment. Uh, maybe you could, uh... Well, after the job you did, there is no way I'm taking you off the courts. You've got a real feel for it. Congratulations. Courts. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> How's it going? Okay, how are you? Is your head okay? Yeah, it's not too bad. Huh? You want to see the television? Yeah. How do you turn it off? You just punch the thing. Okay. Is your head okay? Well, you know, I'm going crazy, so I want to check out of here. They said it was all right, but uh, they want to watch me for general observation. 
And they said it would be really good if I could be living with somebody who would look after me, take care of me, just oh, in case, you know. Oh, Where are you going to go? Well, I thought maybe if it was so right with you, uh, I thought maybe I could stay with you. All right. You can come home. But just until you get better. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Just, uh, How long do you think that'll take? Well, you know, you never know with these things. Marge, they said it could be anywhere from uh, a week, two weeks, uh, three weeks a month. Uh, Mr. Giacconi, are you still here? You were told you would leave an hour ago. Now, come on, we need the bed for sick people. <sighs> Louie! Ah. All right. Okay. You can come home just for a few days, okay? Yeah, just for so a couple of days. You know, this is going to be fabulous. It's going to be like old times. Louis. Maybe we'll go to the movie together. Maybe we'll even go to Hyde Park, okay? Listen. Louis. Louis. I'm hoping and wishing that the next apparition is the sight of you welcoming me home. It's hard enough living Without having visions to the left and the right of you, they won't leave me alone. Give me a cool, hard fact. I'm I seeing see things, things, believe me, you've never seen before. But little, little things, things deceive me, like when you threw me out the door. I couldn't believe my eyes. 